welcome to today's episode of Zoo School Live. We have a super special friend for you guys to meet. Um, if you'll notice, I don't have any art to show you today because we don't have any. So if you guys have been watching and you've been seeing a lot of our really awesome animals, please, please do a rendition of your art of them. You can make something out of clay, you can draw something, take a picture if you make something and send it to us. You can either email that stuff to education at elmwoodparkzoo.org or you can mail it to our Hardy Boulevard address. Either way, we really would love to have it so we can show it here on the show. All right, we also want to give a special shout out to the Quest for the Best Foundation. So they've let us know that they're willing to uh, match donations to our emergency fund up to $25,000. So if you guys are able to donate during this time, it would be a great time because we're really hoping for that donation match. So thank you so much to them. All right, so now I'm going to pass it off to Marissa. She has a super special friend, our 13-year-old red-tailed boa Rocky. Hey guys, welcome back to Zoo School. And today I have one of my great friends, Rocky here. Rocky the boa constrictor. Um, so he is a massive snake, right? He's actually the largest snake that we have here at the zoo, um, which is pretty awesome. He holds our record. You may have seen some of our other snake friends here on Zoo School Live. Um, but Rocky's by far our largest. He measures in at about seven and a half feet long. He's kind of curled up right now. He's a little sleepy. We woke him up to come to work today. Um, but for him, he is in fact seven and a half feet long. He weighs uh, almost 20 pounds um, and he might even get a little bit bigger. So he is what we call a red-tailed boa constrictor um, because on his tail, he has kind of a little bit of a reddish color. And you might be able to see a little bit of that, that right here. It might look a little brown and it depends on the individual snake. Some snakes will have more of a red tail, while as Rocky here, he kind of has more of a brownish red color. Now these guys are native to South America. And where you're gonna find them, he's considered a Colombian red-tailed boa. Um, so you'll find them in Northern South America. So on the upper part of the continent. And these guys are gonna live in a variety of spaces. So they're going to live in all kinds of uh, rainforest habitats. They're going to live even in some grassland areas. And they're gonna live near people. We're gonna pause and come back. All right, so we're actually gonna pause it real quick and we're gonna quickly restart, so hang on, stand by. It looks like we're having a little bit of uh, technical issues. So give me you. just one moment here, and we're gonna come right back. I'm just gonna keep filming. People are saying they don't have audio. All right, so it seems like some of you guys might not have any audio right now. So uh, if you guys... So some people do have audio. Okay, so if you don't have audio, be sure to just double check on your computer and see, you might wanna refresh us and see if, we, uh, see if we're coming through to you guys right now. So hang on, let's see if we have, do we have audio? Okay, yeah, we have audio for some people. Okay, great, so if, you, if you're experiencing some technical difficulties, give us a refresh um, and we'll see if we can, uh, if you can join us again, all right? So we're not, gonna, we're not gonna stop it, so we'll just hang out for a second. So refresh your computers, if not, um, if you're still with us and you can still hear us, that's awesome. We're going to get some close-up footage of Rocky right now because he is just so handsome. So I want you guys to take a close look because I don't know if you guys have ever met a snake with a mustache, but Rocky has a mustache. And if you don't believe me, we're going to get a good up-close view of him right now and take a good look. He's like, no way, I don't want you to see my mustache. I've been in quarantine. I haven't been shaving. So obviously it's not a furry mustache, right? But this is a pattern that is on a lot of red-tailed boas. They have this kind of mustache feature and it, look, it just makes him look like a very dapper fellow. Um, and it's one of my favorite things about Rocky because he is just so cute. And if you don't think that snakes are cute, I'm gonna try to change your mind today. So Rocky, um, he was actually born right here at the zoo. So Hallie mentioned he is 13 years old. Um, so he was born right here, which is super awesome. Um, now these guys, they live solitary lives. So he didn't hang out with mom or dad for long. He cruised off on his own right away. He already knew what to do here. He knew how to be a snake. He didn't need anyone telling him how to be. So for our friend Rocky here, he has been living the solo life for the past 13 years. And that's how he likes it. Um, but he does like cruising around. He is quite the adventurer. If you do come and visit the zoo when we reopen, you might even see him out on a sunny day. We let him cruise around the zoo um, because he loves to adventure. 
He loves to get out, he loves to go exploring, and one of the ways that he explores his environment is with his tongue. So if you guys have been watching or if you've seen any of our other zoo school lives, you may have noticed that um, a lot of our snakes, they use their tongue to smell, right? And not only are they using their tongue to smell, but that's how they're exploring their environment, right? That's how Rocky's checking out what's around him. That's how he's gonna find food. Um, and that's how he's gonna just explore. And Rocky loves to explore. He loves to cruise around in the grass and slither around. So we'll see. Again, remember, he's kind of staying kind of still right now because we did just wake him up. Um, these guys are primarily nocturnal animals in the wild. Uh, so they're going to be a lot, doing a lot of their moving around when it's dark outside, right, when it's nighttime. Um, so typically during the day, Rocky will curl up in a warm spot and he'll do a lot of snoozing throughout the day. Um, so it looks like he's checking you guys out at home. I don't know. He's smelling you guys. So our friend Rocky here, right, he is super awesome. He's got a crazy cool pattern, right? Because Rocky is going to spend a lot of his time up in trees. So even though these guys are really well adapted to live in all kinds of different areas, he's going to live um, even near people in towns, right? In South America, he might live um, in all kinds of other, you know, environments, maybe some grassland areas, but they really thrive in forested areas. Um, so these guys are gonna be spending a lot of time up in trees. And this pattern is gonna allow him to really camouflage into his surroundings. So if you take a look at some of these spots, you can see that he's got some darker areas and some really bright spots. And if you guys checked in with us and watched our ball python episode, you may have noticed that we talked a lot about that because our ball pythons are similarly um, colored. And that's because this coloration helps them blend in with the shadows of the leaves that come through, of the sunlight that comes through the leaves of trees. So all these little spots are supposed to be almost like sunspots shining through the canopy. So that helps him blend in or camouflage really well with his surroundings. Now in the wild, I mean, you can see Rocky's pretty gigantic. So in the wild, he's going to be eating a variety of different kinds of animals. He's going to be eating a lots of, now he's strictly a carnivore, so no salad for Rocky, um, but he's going to be eating lots of things like birds, right? He's going to be up in the trees. He might even swallow down some bird eggs. He's going to eat things like rats and monkeys, maybe even lizards or other types of snakes. So he's going to be eating a lot of different kinds of animals in the rainforest, right? Or in other habitats. So. Rocky here, for the most part, even though he's an enormous snake, he's really only going to be eating things that are as big as the widest part of his body. Um, so he probably won't eat anything bigger that's, you know, about the size of like a cantaloupe. He's not going to eat anything much larger um, around than that. Now, Rocky here, um, he has, he's going to use that sense of smell, right, with his tongue. Um, and that's how he's going to be looking and finding that food, right? Now, Rocky is about full grown at about seven and a half feet long, but if Rocky were a girl, he might get upwards of 11 feet long. So these guys, um, for the most part, the boys are gonna be smaller than the girls. And that's really the only way that you can tell the boys from the girls, um, unless you do a blood test. So we know we've tested Rocky's blood just to make sure he's healthy before, um, and that's how we know that he's a boy, and we know that since he is a boy, he's probably not going to get much bigger than this. He might grow another six inches or so. He's probably going to max out at about eight feet, though. He probably won't get any larger than that. Whereas the females, they average about nine, ten, even eleven feet long. And that's one of the ways that we're going to know that he gets a little bit larger, um, or that the females will get a little bit larger. Now, even though they do get pretty big, these guys will be almost entirely full grown by about three years old. So even though that he is um, like, you know, seven and a half feet long right now, he was actually six feet long already when he was only three years old. So for the past 10 years, he's been about the same size. So even though um, he might have a little more left in him, he's probably not gonna grow that much bigger. Now, Rocky will continue to shed his scales though, right? So I do have a, 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 a shed here with me. 
um, which is pretty awesome. So this is actually from Rocky, and it might be tough to see in the video, but this shed actually retained some of his pattern. So there's some spots here um, that were his spots, which is pretty awesome. So he'll shed these scales um, probably about once a year now, um, or once every six months, nine months to a year. And so this is only a piece of the shed, right? He'll actually um, shed it all in mostly one piece, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then that'll help just keep his scales nice and clean and looking healthy and shiny um, and all that good stuff. So it's a really important part of keeping a snake healthy is making sure that they have healthy sheds. And with each shed, he might get a itty bitty bit bigger, but he won't be getting super large. Now when he was a younger snake, especially in the first three years, he would probably be shedding all the time. So he would be shedding um, probably almost once every few weeks or once a month. Um, and then that way he would get much larger. Now each snake's pattern is going to be a little bit different, um, but most red tail boas will have a similar pattern and similar coloration. These guys don't really come in any other colors. Um, they might range from a little darker to a little lighter, but for the most part these guys are going to stay about the same. Now I did want to show you this really awesome, we got an x-ray of one of our snakes here um, because I wanted to show you guys a little bit of all the bones that are inside of a snake. So even though Rocky is enormous and he's kind of curled up like a pretzel, he is absolutely not made out of rubber, right, or jelly. He does have bones in his body and he has lots of little tiny bones. He has hundreds and hundreds of ribs and that's what's going to allow him to move around even more. So the more bones you have, the more flexible you are, which is pretty awesome. So he has a, he's got his skull and then he has a long backbone and then hundreds of ribs that come off of that. And that's how he's going to be, uh, that's how he's gonna be uh, moving around and able to fold into a pretzel-like shape, which is pretty cool. All right, so I think we're gonna start going to questions here. Awesome, okay, so how fast can Rocky move by Preston? Great question. So Rocky can move pretty quickly. Now he's not gonna be able to slither super fast like some of our smaller snakes, um, but for him, he's able to move really fast, right? And when he strikes his prey, he's gonna kind of coil up his neck similar to this, um, and he's gonna strike, and that strike is very fast. Um, so it depends what, what part of Rocky we're talking about. So with him, when he does strike out his food, it's going to be super speedy. And he can, he can cruise through the grass at a decent pace, but he's not going to be able to slither away like a much smaller snake would be able to. Um, they move really fast. So it looks like Carolina wants to know, where did he come from? Well, Carolina, he was actually born here at the zoo 13 years ago. And Rocky's actually turning 14 very shortly. Uh, Madeline wants to know how long is his tongue? That's a great question, Madeline. So I'm not sure the exact number, but I would guess that it's anywhere between two um, to maybe three, three and a half inches long. Um, and he's going to be sticking that tongue out right. He wiggles it around. He picks up all the smells that are floating around in the air. And when he pulls that tongue back in his mouth, it touches the roof of his mouth. Um, and that's where he's going to be able to smell all those smells. And Gavin wants to know what are his predators? Oh, great question, Gavin. So these guys, luckily, as full-grown adult snakes, they don't have too many natural predators. These guys are going to be um, preyed on by maybe some large cats, right? There are things like jaguars um, and ocelots, right? We have uh, smaller and larger cats that might try to munch these guys up. There's also some birds of prey that might try to eat these guys. Um, but really, one of their biggest threats is habitat loss. Um, so for these guys, they are going to be eating or things that might try to, you know, their habitat, they live a lot in trees, their food lives in trees. So with habitat loss, their numbers do go down. Um, and obviously people are actually one of their biggest predators. A lot of people are really scared of snakes. So even though our friend Rocky is not venomous at all, a lot of people will still kill snakes because they are scared of them. So the first step about saving snakes, especially really cool ones, um, like our friend Rocky and all the snakes that are in the world, is just learning about them and learning that a lot of snakes are really not as scary as we may think they are. So Garrett would like to know, would he get sick if he ate a poison dart frog? Wow, I don't know if he would eat a poison dart frog and I actually am not sure if he would get sick. I would assume that if he did eat one, he would probably get sick. 
um, because poison dart frogs can be super poisonous, right? They're not good for a lot of animals to eat. That's what helps protect them in the wild. Um, so if Rocky were to, act, were to eat one of those poison dart frogs, I would say he might have a pretty bad day. I don't think, he, I don't think he'd like that very much. Owen and Tyler want to know, is his family at the zoo? His family is not at the zoo. I'm actually not sure what happened um, to his snakes, um, his other, his mom and his dad. But remember, Rocky's been on his own since the second he was born. Um, and for him, he really, uh, you know, he really is a solo animal. He likes to live on his own. So even though he hangs out with us as educators and zookeepers, he doesn't really like to hang out with other snakes. So it looks like uh, Liam and Ronan want to know, are they similar to rattlesnakes? So they're similar to rattlesnakes in that they are absolutely, um, they're snakes, right? They have a lot of the same characteristics. They slither, um, but unlike rattlesnakes, they're not venomous. These guys are going to be able to catch their prey uh, using, they're going to snag their prey and then they're going to give it a great big hug because he's a constrictor. Um, and then another difference for these guys is I actually have a Western uh, Diamondback skull here. And you can see this is the upper jaw that we have. And you can see these great big fangs. And then they have these tinier little fangs underneath. Um, and so our friend Rocky here, he doesn't have great big fangs like this because he doesn't need to inject any venom or anything like that. Remember, Rocky's not venomous. Um, so instead, Rocky's going to have more like these teeth. And he can have upwards of like 200 of those teeth in his mouth. So he absolutely still has teeth in that mouth, even though he doesn't have great large fangs like this, that he doesn't need to inject venom, right? But he's still going to be uh, have tons of teeth in his mouth. So great question. So they're a little bit the same because they're both snakes, right? They're both carnivores. They're both going to slither. Um, they have the same kind of similar body type, right? But they're going to they're going to do a little bit different. They're going to live in different areas. And they're going to hunt for their food in different ways. So. Do they squeeze things every day or only when they eat? Great question. Um, so for Rocky here, like if I were holding him, um, he's a really big snake, so I don't quite hold him. Um, but if I were to hold him, he would actually hold on to me back. Um, so that's you know one of the reasons why I would never put him around my neck because he's gonna hold on. He just thinks that I'm a tree. Um, but he might try to squeeze just to hold on normally. Um, now when he's squeezing things, like if he's constricting something, it's mostly just when he eats though, so good question. So Gretchen wants to know how long, he is seven and a half feet long, great question. So Rowan wants to know, oh is he venomous? Well I hope I answered your question Rowan, he is not venomous. Linus wants to know how, uh, how thick is Rocky at the thickest? Hmm, that's a great question. You know what, I'm not exactly sure how exactly long he is, but I do have a ruler here, so you know what, let's just, let's try it out, let's see how long he is. So I would say probably the thickest part of his body is um, right around here, I'd say. All right, this isn't going to stay. Okay, so let's see if we can see. He's like, whoa, I did not expect this to happen today. All right, so it looks like he is about 10 inches around, which is actually much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So, <laughs> thanks for the info. I had no idea. All right, let's see. Golden wants to know, does he have teeth? Yes, he absolutely does. So he can have upwards of like 200 teeth in his mouth. They're pretty small, but they are definitely sharp and they're made for holding onto his food before he swallows it whole. All right, and RJ wants to know, how good is his eyesight? So, he has pretty decent eyesight, but it's definitely not his, not his best sense, right? So he is going to be using that sense of smell to really explore his, uh, his environment. So for him, he's really going to be using that sense of smell with that tongue. His eyesight's still pretty decent, but remember, he's going to be moving around at nighttime, so he's mostly nocturnal. So he's not really going to be relying on his eyesight anyway. Julia wants to know, does he take baths? He sure does, Julia. So we put him in a nice warm bath about once a week or once every other week, and he uh, doesn't really like it, but <laughs> it's really good for him. Um, and once he settles down, he does enjoy it. A nice warm bath every once in a while. And these guys are pretty good swimmers. Even though they don't swim very often, uh, they are still pretty good at moving through the water. So Rocky does uh, eat um, uh, rats here at the zoo. He eats large rats. Um, and he only eats once every other week. So our friend Rocky
groggy here, he's really not going to be eating a whole lot um, of food because it's going to take him nearly two weeks to digest his food. So I would say that absolutely his favorite food are rats. Jackson wants to know, is he a reptile? Oh, great question, Jackson, because I definitely didn't mention that, so I'm glad you reminded me. Rocky is a reptile, so he's covered in scales, and he also is cold-blooded. So that means that he's gonna rely on the outside temperature for his inside temperature, right? So if it's a nice warm day, he's gonna be toasty warm. So he'll go and he'll slither out into a sunny spot during the day to warm up, maybe in between his, his naps during the day. And Layla wants to know, do they have ears? So Layla, they don't quite have ears, but they do have these special membranes in their heads, um, kind of around the side, kind of by his, his eyeball, and he's gonna be able to feel vibration. So even though he doesn't have ears, he can't quite hear sounds, he can hear certain uh, vibrations. So if it's a really loud noise, it's gonna make a certain vibration, and he can absolutely hear that. Casey wants to know, how big was he when he was born? Ooh, good question, Casey. So these guys are super small when they're born. So they're probably maybe about like an inch or two round. They're very small and they probably are only about maybe eight to 10 inches long. So they are very tiny when they're born. And it's really important um, that if you, um, you know, if you're, if you're looking around and maybe you really love snakes and you wanna get a snake as a pet, Right? Just like any of the other animals we've been talking about, it's so important to do your research because a lot of pet stores will sell these guys red tail boas as babies and they look like really tiny little snakes. But then in the very small print, it says, we'll get 10 feet long. So just be, uh, definitely just be, um, you know, just be always looking and learning about animals and make sure you know exactly how big those animals are gonna get. Catherine wants to know, how many bones does he have? So snakes have maybe 300 or more bones. It depends on the size. So I would say Rocky probably has way more than 300 bones. Um, and humans only have 206. So our friend Rocky here has a lot more bones in his body than we do. All right, and Tyler wants to know, this looks like this is our, one of our last questions here. We only have a few more left. So Tyler, how long do they live? So in human care, right, like at the zoo here where there's no predators, right, no threats from the wild, Rocky might live to be over 40 years old, which is so awesome, right, because he's only 13. He's turning 14 on June 7th, and that's when he'll be 14 years old, but he's going to live to be 40, maybe even over 40, which is really special for us. All right, and Luke wants to know, do Rocky's scales mean anything? So yeah, so his scales are gonna help protect him um, from predators, right? They're gonna help protect him mostly from a little bit of debris, right? They're pretty soft. They're not really gonna um, help him out with any anything that tries to grab him. Um, but for Rocky here, those scales, that pattern is gonna help camouflage, which helps to protect him from predators, right? Those patterns. And they help keep him really clean because he's gonna shed those scales. And that's gonna allow him to help stay nice and clean and healthy. So guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. Um, it's really important that we learn about animals, right? That's how we save species is just by learning. Um, so thanks again for tuning in. And remember, um, Quest for the Best Foundation is gonna be matching up to $25,000 in donations. So if you're able to, and only if you're able, please donate to our emergency fund um, and you can maybe uh, help out Rocky, maybe buy him his next rat. So thanks so much guys for joining us here today.